Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So in the last video, I kind of gave a recap for where the Arctic uh, sea ice is. We're very, very close to the minimum. Doesn't look like the 2012 minimum will be broken, but we're, we're in a solid uh, second place. And um, I'll continue, I'll finish up that discussion quickly, and then I'll get to the main things that I want to talk about in this series of videos. And that's the uh, how the how the how cyclones how large cyclones such as hurricanes actually can add energy or subtract energy from the jet streams and therefore distort them in the north south direction and affect weather weather thousands of miles uh, downstream. Um, I just wanted to point out before I get into that that um, I don't read a lot of uh, fiction, but um, you know, people are saying, Paul, you know, read, read some more fiction. You know, it's, uh, it's really, so I, I, I do read some, uh, but anyway, this book here, I picked up at a used bookstore, Stephen King under the dome. It's, um, I don't know if many people have read it, but it's 2009. Um, and it's kind of fascinating. And, uh, I guess you could connect it to climate. I mean, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we need to start building domes over some cities to keep keep away uh, extreme weather events. But anyway, it's a really good read. I, I can't put it down. I'm captivated. So so you're lucky you're getting these uh, videos at the moment while I'm only halfway through the book. OK, so let's get back to the um, Arctic sea ice first. OK, so. If you go to the, uh, if you Google National Snow and Ice Data Center, NSIDC, um, go to their website. They just published a, a uh, blog September 16th yesterday, and it gives you sort of a good overview of, you know, where we're at, you know, compared to other years. You know, here's t the previous record. Here's the record minimum in 2012. Here's where we are in 2020, what the curve looks like, and uh, the next closest year. So in a very we're in a very, very solid uh, second place. And I also talked last video, make sure you watch it to look to learn about the Bremen shifting of their curve, you know, because the Bremen curve was very, very close to the 2012, and then they shifted it up, and it looks very, very close now to the National Snow and Ice Data Center curve. So I discussed that in, in the previous video. Um, so this is where I, so there's lots of information about the weather patterns, the temperature, the drift of the ice, etc. And this is uh, sea surface uh, temperatures. Um, so this is the ice, uh, the, the, the white area. This is sea ice concentration on the gray scale here. Okay, low concentration, darker, uh, the white and is uh, higher concentration. Um, and you can see the sea surface temperature, uh, minus 1 to minus 1.5 is mostly around the fringes of the ice. This is minus 0. 0.5 to minus 1. You can see how warm the temperature gets, the, the water temperature gets. Um, you know, the, the brown here is above 5 degrees Celsius in the Arctic. Um, and I previously talked about the water, the warm, saltier, Atlantic water coming closer and closer to the surface, warming this water up, stopping the ice um, from melting, help melting significant amounts of ice, and uh, it'll it'll um, slow down the, the the freeze up for sure. Okay, uh, the, and they talk also about the transportation route across the Arctic. I mean, if you look at the, you know, image here, look at all this open water on the on the uh, Eurasian side. Okay, so it talks about the, uh, you know, how, op how how there'll be a lot more boat traffic across there. Okay, so let's go now to the, to, to hurricanes and uh, large storms and the interactions on the jet stream. So before I do that, um, make sure you're following me on Twitter at Paul H. Beckwith. And, uh, you know, these are images from some of the damage. This is a bridge in Pensacola where where Sally, um, you know, Sally basically cut loose eight construction barges. Two of them hit the bridge. 
okay it's a newly built span and it was hit by the barges and this is what happened parts of it just collapsed i mean um here's an image of the forecasts of sally and the track what the actual track was so lots of storm surge in these regions the, the reason why sally did so much damage as a category two is because it was moving very slow once it hit the you know it was moving just a few miles an hour so it brings to mind uh you know hurricane harvey which you know, was going a mile an hour and twirling around and dumped up to five feet of snow, of, of snow, of rainfall on parts of Texas. Okay, um, some things I'll probably talk about soon, slowing of the AMOC. Um, there's some new papers on that. Um, August had four separate billion dollar disasters, Hurricane Isaias. Midwest derecho, straight line winds caused huge damage to crops, the California fires, of course, and Hurricane Laura. And now, um, you know, this month we have Hurricane Sally, very, very active season. Um, and uh, so here, here's a, an update, uh, you know, look at the, what we have right now. So this is, uh, you know, this is as of today, September 17th. We've got Sally working her way, you know, she came ashore, her category two, and is working her way up over the land and dissipating and weakening and uh, low pressure area here, Hurricane Teddy, Hurricane Vicky here, or Tropical Storm Vicky and all of these other tropical storms forming. The water is extremely warm in this basin and we're getting record numbers of uh, formations and named storms. Um, okay, and this is one of the reasons why this is happening. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly for August 2020. Okay, um, and uh, it's the fourth highest since 1950. The only higher August values were after significant El Nino, epi El Nino episodes in the previous winter. Okay, so 1998, 2010, 2016. Okay, were record, were, were significant El Nino events, and then the sea surface temperature was much warmer. But we don't have that this year. In fact, we have a La Nina situation here. But look at the temperatures here, very, very warm temperatures across this whole region here and from Africa where they're forming and coming up here through the Caribbean, but also in the Pacific Ocean. Um, there's Japan, so off Japan, very, very warm water. But as you can see, the, the, the water cools down as you get closer and closer to Japan. And this is very important because the storms that were, you know, huge mega storm category fives and weakened before they went up into the South Korean peninsula. But there were three within the space of two weeks. Okay, this is a, a radar loop of Sally, uh, September 14th, 15th, or the 15th, 16th. Um, and, you know, it started as a disorganized tropical storm. And it came when it, um, it became more and more organized with a category two. It almost hit category three before it came ashore, but it was moving extremely slowly, you know, just a few miles an hour. So, People say, well, it kind of popped out, popped up out of nowhere. Um, it didn't like travel across the Atlantic and come here. It formed in the region and then came ashore. So it did kind of come up very, very quickly uh, to a lot of people. Okay, so this is, um, so Earth Null School, looking at the air at the surface and the winds. And I started on August uh 22nd, and I'll just advance a day at a time here. Okay, so this is uh, the U.S. here. Um, this is the, so the Atlantic, across the Atlantic, and I'll just advance, and you can look at the behavior. So there's one of the storms here. Okay, you can see some things, other things in some regions, but as you track through a day at a time, so here's this guy here, there's this guy here. Okay, this one here is intensifying as it comes up, moving up here, and then comes ashore. That was the end of August. 
Okay, uh, so we'll keep going here. There's another one here, another one here. It looks like something's forming here. This is early September. These two right guy, right guys right here. I'll just go through a few more days here. Okay, so you got this forming off Africa, this guy here. We'll keep going. They're both intensifying here and tracking across the Atlantic. This is September 11th now, two, two here. This September 12th. Couple more forming here and here, and there's one forming here. This is Sally forming here. Okay, so there's Sally now there, and there's one here, 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 another one over here. Very, very active year. So we've got Sally. This is the one that came across and, uh, you know, hit Bermuda. So we've got one, two, three, four, five here. Uh, September 14th, September 15th, one, two, three, four, five here in the Atlantic Basin, one in the Pacific Basin. I think there's one in the Mediterranean that's forming too. A Medicaine, they call it, in the Mediterranean. This is a fairly new feature for the Mediterranean. September 16th, look how strong it is in the Mediterranean. So we've got one in the Pacific we can see, and uh, Sally's come ashore, and so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this in this image alone. Okay, so very, very warm water. And this is a projection into the future. Let's see where this one goes. Uh, it could be nearing. Uh, it looks like it turns before it hits uh, Bermuda. Okay, so very, very active. We can go and start at August 21st and look at um, mean, sea, uh, mean sea level pressure. Okay, so the blues are lows, and I'm starting at the same date, and I'll just go through quickly. So you can see, you can actually see very clearly where the lows are occurring. Okay, so here's a couple here. Okay, so it's almost easier to spot on this mean sea level, mean uh, sea level pressure map. There we go here. This is August 26th, so this is what, Laura, I guess, coming ashore. Okay, and you can see, that, you know, something starting here, maybe over here. Okay, this guy pops up here, one here, one here. Up here a couple, right? So now we're into September 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. So intensity fairly strong here. This is the 9th, the 10th, 11th. 12th. Now we see one, two, three, four, one over here too, and nothing in the, well, this one here coming from land in the Mediterranean. And this is the 13th. So here we have the Pacific one, we have Sally, we have one here, maybe a very weak one here, here. Uh, let's just keep going. Okay, Sally is about to hit. This one, this one past Bermuda, hit Bermuda, couple up here, here. Okay, now this is quite fascinating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, perhaps. I mean, this is just phenomenal. This is incredible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the 16th, this is today. Looks like another weak one here even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, it's just uh, so very, very active. Now, because there's so many, if you want to look and connect these to the jet stream, well, you're, you're welcome to try it and get back to me. But I mean, this is the jet stream, you know, from uh, the 20, August 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 27th. Okay, so you can see, uh, you know, even up at high levels, you can see uh, this is the, uh, so, so, so a very powerful hurricane, you're going to see it at, at the surface, of course, but also right the way up to, into the jet stream, at the, at the tropopause, basically. Um, okay, but basically the jet stream was very, very weak with uh, Sally, nowhere near. 
So Sally went very slowly. Thanks for listening. I'll continue.